Uh, thanks again for having us in here. Um, first of all, hats off to Coach Marlin uh, and his team. Uh, they were very well prepared. They were very aggressive. They played a tremendous, a tremendous game. You know, they they, they were in tune to their game plan uh, and did the things that needed to be done uh, for them to win. And um, you know, we stepped into this. You know, kind of preparing two different ways. Uh, we were preparing, hoping to have Big John Ogiaco in the lineup, um, and we prepared for a lineup without him. <laughs> you know, and that that's hard on a one-day prep to prepare two different two different game plans. And uh, you know, first and foremost, you know, he he is healthy. You know, for the, those of you back home that may be watching, structurally, John is fine. There's no ligament, no meniscus damage. Uh, just a, just a really bad sprain. And uh, you know, he, he, he worked for two days to try to get out there uh, and just at the end wasn't able to do it. And so, you know, we had to go with, with approach number two. And we knew we were going to be small. And, uh, you know, because Miro, Miroslav Stoffel wound up being our only real post player that we had left in this game. And uh, so we had to go small, small lineup. And we knew we were going to have to shoot the three really well because we were going to play five perimeter guys a lot of times. Um, you know, and, and, and we didn't. We went three for 20. But a lot of that is, if you've watched our team all year, there are two ways that we shoot the three, and when we shoot the three well, it's by touching the paint, you know. And, and one of our ways of touching the paint went out when John was injured. You know, we'd love to throw it into him. He can score one-on-one. -on -one. He can command a double team uh, and pass it out, and that gets other teams in scramble outs, and we get some open looks. And the other way is to get Jacob. Uh, and our perimeter guys driving the ball to the paint and passing and finding the next guy. And, you know, they were really able to lock in on our perimeter today. And that was one way they could keep us from getting into the paint is really keep the guards out of the paint. They can't throw it inside this game. And, uh, you know, but I'm going to give, you know, my team credit. I love these guys. You know, this was a tremendous effort. Their heart, their competitiveness showed in that we played five perimeter guys and wound up winning the rebounding battle 40 to 33. So, so the heart and the competition was there. Just, you know, we didn't execute quite the way we had hoped that we would. Uh, and with us, you know, I've got Jacob Meyer, freshman, uh, and I've got Kylan Blackman, um, junior, that's graduating here in, in another month or so. And we'll open up now for questions. Jacob, obviously a hot shooting night last game. Uh, what were they doing defensively? I know Coach touched on that a little bit. What were they doing defensively to make you know the three point ball a little bit more difficult for you today? Uh, you know, just uh, I think personally it was just a bad shooting night for me. You know, I just couldn't get it going, and uh, yeah. So. And then you know maybe when those three point shots weren't falling, what, what did you change a little bit? Obviously, you ended up uh, with twenty two points, so you found a way to score in other ways. Uh, so my, when my three-point uh, shot wasn't falling, I decided, you know, get to the paint. And if I get, couldn't get to the paint, you know, kick out to my shooters. So. Go ahead, Billy. Uh, Kylan, you finished six to seven at the line. Um, you know, kind of what he was talking about, just being aggressive, attacking the basket. Um, what were you seeing out there to finish with 17? Uh, they were um, keying in, keying in on me on the three-point line, so they know I can shoot the ball really well. So I had to get to the paint <coughs> and get to the foul line, you know. And then, Coach, what was what was Kobe Julian doing on the other side of the ball to to be so successful against you guys today? He, he was aggressive. You know, I, I, I thought he was very aggressive. He didn't settle. You know, he didn't settle for contested perimeter shots, contested mid range shots. Uh, you know, I think the threes he shot, he felt pretty confident he was open. Uh, and then he and then he really got the ball, you know, to the rack, to the paint, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and he was just aggressive. You know, he was aggressive using his strength. Um, you know, to, to get in there against against a smaller lineup that we had to play, and you know, and that's a tribute to him, you know, as to how as how he played and not not accepting, you know, you know, questionable shots or, or soft shots. You know, I thought he really, really, really did the right things and got in there and, and made and made 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 things tough on us. And then, coach, obviously, it's been a, a, a little bit of a difficult year for Coastal. Mm -hmm. Some transition, thing, different things. What does it mean to to have this group around you come down, win a game in the tournament, um, and, and just what what do you take from this experience down in Pensacola this year? Well, it's a great experience. You know, first and foremost, it's the first time we won in this building. <laughs> you know, we we've won at the tournament down here, but it was at Pensacola State in the first year. Uh, so you know, so that was a tribute to these guys. And you know, and to be honest, you know, this group, we've had a lot of adversity all year. The roster has had to change. You know, some some things I had to do. 
uh, that weren't easy decisions and then some things that were out of our control. You know, Jimmy Nichols breaks his foot and has surgery. And, you know, John Ozyako gets hurt yesterday on, on a freak play on the baseline and we wind up not having our all-conference big. Uh, you know, but I will say this. You know, I love these two guys, but I love those guys in that locker room too. Every single one of them. They never, the ones we finished the year up with in the locker room, they gave me everything they had. And sometimes it was enough, sometimes it wasn't. But it wasn't because they didn't try. They didn't have heart. They didn't compete. And, you know, these two guys right here, you know, they're, they're, they're a tribute to this team staying together and being able to come down here to win a game in Pensacola and have a chance, you know, to play in a second-round game today against a very, very good team that played extremely well in Louisiana. Okay, Billy. Um, I mean, I learned that I could, you know, overcome anything, go through adversity, overcome it. You know, we've dealt with a lot this year, you know, losing our head coach, Coach Cliff um, Ellis. And to, for this man to come in and do the job that he did and to keep us together and the team, like, to keep the players that, you know, stay, hats off to him because this is a wonderful man right here. And I love this man. He's, he's done anything for me. And I always got his back. I agree with that. You know, Coach Moss came in, you know, when uh, Cliff Ellis left, and, you know, he put us all together, made us be a family, even more of a family, and hats off to him, like KB said. So.